I've got some really bad news for everybody here. We've never had a truly original idea. Not you, not me. All ideas are always unoriginal. This is because of the way that knowledge relates to time. You'll never have a truly original idea. All ideas will always be related to some past idea, some present idea, and some future idea. And if you, like me, have ever made the mistake of letting go of an idea because it's already been done before, then I invite you to rethink that mistake. There are no original ideas. But that doesn't mean that unoriginal ideas are bad. In fact, I want you to give up entirely the notion that you have to be original at all. You have nothing to lose by pursuing an unoriginal idea because your idea will be a good, great, amazing, innovative idea that improves, builds, clarifies, distills, and sharpens an already pre-existing idea. The idea of originality is a cultural myth. It needlessly discourages communication, stifles, <clears throat> excuse me, stifles innovation, and perpetuates an intellectual isolationist lie. Ironically, I thought I was the only one who felt this way. All through undergrad, I had a really hard time coming up with interesting original questions to ask about the books that we read. I was a philosophy major struggling to do what we are supposed to do, which is to ask really annoying questions until people ignore us. <laughs> but in ethics, metaphysics, epistemology, logic, I had a very, very difficult time coming up with anything to ask. I thought that I just wasn't very good at it. Until four years ago, I took an Africana philosophy class, and I presented a paper in that class that focused almost entirely on just one book. I integrated some ideas from other texts we read, and after class that day, my professor pulled me aside, and she said that what I presented that day was an original idea that no one else had written about that book. I was shocked. The information I presented was simply an amalgam of information that you could have gotten just from that text. It was nothing but a recombination of ideas. Nothing about it, I felt, was truly original. And this wasn't just imposter syndrome. At that moment, I felt a sneaking suspicion of something that I had thought for a long time. There aren't any original ideas. As grad students, we're told that we have to publish or perish, that we have to come up with an original, significant contribution to the field. But I don't think that we can ever really do it for three reasons. First, every idea is related to some idea in the past. And what this means is any idea you have right now exists in relation to one or more ideas from the past. Second, every idea you have right now is related to some idea from right now. And what this means is that every present idea exists in relation to one or more current ideas. And third, every idea you have right now is related to some idea in the future, which means that some future idea depends on your present idea. To demonstrate, I'll tell you a little bit more about my work in that Africana philosophy class. The sum total of my work in that class focused almost entirely on just two books. But the idea that I was developing at the time relied greatly on other ideas from the past, including, but not limited to, the entire Western philosophical canon that I had been exposed to in undergrad, a smattering of Asian philosophy, and the other four books we read in that class, and of course, my idea in that presentation has been with me ever since and necessarily influences the work I do now, four years later. The work I did in that class exists in relation to other books we read at the time, other books we read in the past, and other books we read in the future. And my idea then exists in relation to and is dependent on ideas through time. As philosophers, we always have to come up with as many examples as we possibly can 
to prove our argument. I'm going to lean into that tradition tonight. And I'm going to try to further demonstrate my point by talking about a book from the beginning of philosophy. I'm going to talk about justice in Plato's Republic. And by the way, in case anybody asks, talking about justice in Plato's Republic is all anybody who talks about Plato's Republic talks about. <laughs> Plato's Republic is arguably the founding document of Western philosophy. It's a book about, among other things, what justice is and how the nature of justice influences the political formation of a city-state. This goes on for like 300 pages. It's long and it's complicated, but a third of the way in, and I'm on page 111 of the Bloom translation, if you'll all open your books, please. <laughs> Socrates, the main character, is talking to Plato's older brother, Glaucon, and they land on a definition of justice that I think you're going to find familiar. Now, since it's a dialogue, I'm going to act it out. When I look this way, I'm Socrates, and when I look this way, I'm Glaucon. Let's see if I made any sense. What we said at the beginning about founding a city, we said that every person in that city should perform that function of the city that is best suited to their nature, right? Yeah, we said that. Excellent. So justice, then, is the minding of one's own business and not being a busybody. We've both heard this before from other people, and we've said it ourselves. Yeah, we said that. Awesome. So, the practice of minding your own business, that's probably justice. And do you know how I infer this? No, I, I'm sorry. I was just saying yes to get you to stop talking. <laughs> so there's another 190 pages of this because Glaucon wasn't paying attention. But we're not going to worry about all that. Tonight, we're just going to worry about what we just said about justice. Because I know you've heard it before. I know that at some point, you were probably doing something you shouldn't have been doing, and somebody nearby hollered, mind your own business. We've all been reminded to mind our own business, and none of us needed to read Plato to know that we ought to mind our own business sometimes. It's got to be one of the most unoriginal takes on justice out there, and yet, over 2,000 years ago, Plato wrote it down in the foundational document of Western political thought. He even says that it's something they've heard before from other people, so we know that it exists in relation to their past. And that book will be with us probably forever, so we know that it exists in relation to their future. So not only is Plato's Republic unoriginal in the sense that they're talking about something they didn't invent, justice, in ways they didn't invent, minding your own business, but it exists in relation with, and it's dependent on, other ideas through time. This is a great book. And it doesn't matter how unoriginal minding your own business is. And it doesn't matter that there's like 300 pages of coming up with different ways to mind your own business. It's such a good book, in fact, that if you've watched The Good Place on NBC, then you've already seen different ways to build a just city, just like Plato did. And you've seen what happens when you don't mind your own business in the just city. <laughs> it crumbles. The Republic exists in relation through time with The Good Place, a show that's been called the most original sitcom on television. Now, I've been saying that there are no original ideas. The Republic and the Good Place exist in intimate relation through time. Because you could just watch The Good Place and learn everything you need to know about justice from Plato's Republic. In this case, the movie really is better than the book. <laughs> the Good Place is borrowing directly from Plato's Republic, Descartes' Meditations, Dante's Inferno, Kant's Ethics, Scanlon's What We Owe to Each Other, Sartre's No Exit, just to name a few you'll learn all the same stuff about justice. That's why it's a great show. That's also why The Republic is a great book. The show might be unoriginal in content, maybe, but it improves, and it builds, and it clarifies, and it distills, and it sharpens thousands of, thousands of years of ideas 
about justice. Your idea, my idea, our ideas are valuable and good, even if they've been done before. Don't let the myth of originality stop you from seeing your idea through. Everyone's borrowing something off of somebody else, whether they know it or not. Even the greatest thinkers of the past and the present and the future. So go for it. Write your republic. Thank you very much.